Welcome back. I thought I'd bring you a quick video today on bearing stress. It's something in solid mechanics and mechanics materials that a lot of students kind of get hung up on. So I want to just totally clear the air. Let's talk about what the heck is bearing stress. Okay. We know a couple of stresses already, don't we? We've learned about sigma stress or normal stress, and that's the stress from compressing something or stretching something, okay? And that was P over A, okay? Force over area, or we could call it N over A if you wanna talk about the internal forces, right? The normal force is the one that's pulling or compressing uh, a member. And then we talked about average shear stress, which is just tau stress, and that's the tearing stress, where I've got one force going up, one down, that's tearing a body in half. And that was V over A, and V being that downward tearing force from our internal force analysis, okay? So we know about those two things, and then you see problems like this that say, you know, find bearing stress. And you're like, okay, but I don't know what bearing stress is. Bearing sounds like uh, if it spins real fast, there'll be some little balls in there and it help it spin real fast. It's not that kind of bearing, okay? Think about bearing is like, if I'm bearing on you, what does that mean, right? If I'm bearing on something, that means that I'm imparting a force on something over some area. So, you know, where, how much area is something pressing on something else? Well, if something is pressing on something, if I'm bearing on something, what is bearing stress? It sounds like a compressive stress, right? I'm just bearing on the wall here. Uh, that means that mm, there's a force over some area. I mean, it kind of sounds like that, doesn't it? Because this sigma stress is a compressive stress, right? So really, truly, bearing stress is another kind of just plain old normal stress, okay? It is just a force over an area. And typically, where do we see this? We see this on a bolt. We got a bolt going through a piece of lumber, right? Here's a bolt one, and, and you have the head of the bolt. Well, if I tighten the nut up too much, what happens? I kind of pull the head of the bolt down into the wood, right? So how do I in, you know, reduce that pulling the head into the wood? You put a washer under it, right? And that washer has a big bearing surface. It has a bigger area than the head does, and it keeps that from compressing. And so there is a bearing stress between the contact area of the washer and the wood that it's going through, okay? So that's what bearing stress is. Bearing stress is just, okay, it's just um, sigma stress, okay? And the whole key to that is, the hardest part of this is, what is the area, right? Well, that's just the area that one object is bearing on another. If, if, you know, if I'm pushing on one object, how much area is in contact with you? That's bearing stress. Let's work an example so we make sense of this, okay? Ooh. Okay, so we've got a post here that has some kind of a bar on it, okay? Uh, it has a force P on one end and it has, ooh, what does that look like over there? Come on, statics party people, what is that? That's a two-force member, right? That's a two-force member. Because it's pin connected at both ends, no force in the middle. Remember that guy? Okay, and so at the heart of this problem, the very first step is we got a statics problem in front of us, okay? And how big is P? I didn't tell you how big P is. How big do you want P to be? Let's make P 250 newtons, okay? All right, so it's 250 newtons. So step one right? Let's read, well, step one, read the problem, okay? If bar BCD, here's BCD, this bar here, uh, is, is 15 millimeters thick, so into the board, right, is 15 millimeters thick, and it has a bolt at C, there's the bolt, I drew it as a little hex head for the little bolt head, uh, and here's the, here's the bolt underneath the head right here, Whoop, right, okay? The bolt has a diameter of nine millimeters, and is in single shear. What does that mean, is in single shear? It means this, like here is, here's an example, okay? Here's the bar, 
And here's the bolt, let's say, okay? That means that the post is only connected here, right? And if I push down this hard enough and I could shear through this bolt, I could tear it off, right? I would only have to tear through that area how many times? One time, right? Now, if this pin went all the way through and I had something holding it here and something holding it here to tear this guy out, right? I would have to tear through one, two. That would be double shear. But in this one, it's just connected to one side only, right? So that the bar can rotate. And so I'm only going to have to tear through it single shear, okay? Let's see. What else does that mean? So find the shear stress, the average shear stress. Average shear stress, that sounds a lot like tau, right? For the bolt. What is the shear stress of this guy trying to tear through that bolt right there? Okay, that's number one. Number two, find the bearing stress from the bolt exerted on bar BCD. So as I pull down this bar, right? As I pull down on the bar, there's my bolt sticking through there, right? The bar, in turn, is pressing on, or the bolt, rather, the bolt is pressing upwards on the bar. What is the bearing stress of that bolt pushing upwards on the bar? We can see if we can find that. So let's see if we can do this. Step one, well, step one is we got a little statics problem here. And you know how all good stacks problems starts. Let me hear you. Free body diagram. That's right. Okay. So let's go. Now look here. They gave me this. They said that this angle here is 20 degrees. And that angle is 70 degrees. That's 90 degrees, isn't it? So really, I'm going to leave that just like he is. There he is. 250 degrees. No. Newtons at 90 degrees, okay? Here is a pin connection in the middle where C is where that bolt is, is a pin connection, right? Because it can pivot there. Uh, what's the reaction for a pin connection? Well, um, it's CX and CY, right? I'm gonna do that. Well, yeah, mm, you know I'm not, if that's okay with you. I'm not gonna do that. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to tilt my coordinate system and I'm just going to make this my new X direction, especially since those dimensions are tilted and I'm going to make this my new Y direction, right? And so I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to call that CY and I'll call this guy CX. Is that okay? And then I have this guy over here at the end Two force member, right? So I know that my force is there, right? From uh, AB. AB. Fabulous. Okay. Now I want to do the same thing. I want to break this guy up into two components. One here and one there. Okay. Ooh, I did that right, didn't I? If this guy goes to the that way, that guy has to go to the that way, right? Now they're giving me that. The, what did they give me here? What is this angle right there? What is that angle? What do you think? Because here's where I am. This is 20. This is 70, which means this angle here must be 20, right? So from here to here must be what? 50 degrees, right? Yes? Yeah, I can hear you over there saying yes. So this is going to be F... A, B, cosine of 50, and this is going to be F, A, B, sine of 50. Man, if I could just get my students and you guys just to draw good free body diagrams, the world would be a better place. Okay, fine. Let's find F, A, B. Let's do that by taking the moment at point C. Okay, so if I take the moment at C, what's going to happen here? Now, this is a statics review. We should be good at this, right? You got 250 that rotates me. What is that? How about negative? Minus 250 times how far away? Uh, right here. Which How far is that? 500. Okay. 
And then I got this guy. Watch it, watch it, watch it. He's a cha cha force, right? He gets knocked out. Of course, CX and CY is knocked out because I took the moment at point C. So that leaves this guy, which rotates me positive. So plus FAB cos 50 times how far away? Well, times this. If the force is in the Y, then the distance is in the X. Okay, so times 800. So from that little equation, move that to the other side. FAB is equal to calculator. Where are you? Here we go. 250 times a 500 divided by the cosine of 50. Whoa. And then take that and divide it by 800. 800 equals. 243. Okay, so FAB is 243 newtons. Well, that's fabulous, FAB, but you got nothing to do with what's going on at point C, where that bolt is. And that's really what all this question is about, is what's going on at the bolt? So how do I find the forces on the bolt? Well, that's C1 and CX, right? I need those two guys. How about this? Some of the forces in the X, I bet that's going to get CX, isn't it? Equals CX minus this guy minus FAB, I know you, 243 sine of 50. Okay. Anything else in the X direction? No, it's like it. So therefore, CX is equal to 243 times the sine of of 50, 186.21. Okay, there's CX. Let's get CY. Some of the force in the Y direction. And what do I have in the Y direction? I got CY going uphill. CY. 250 going downhill, minus 250. And then minus, this guy's going downhill. FAB cos 50 which is 243 cos 50. Well, that's not how you make a zero. Zero, okay? So move all that to the other side. CY is equal to what? 250 plus 243 cosine of 50 equals 406.2. Okay. Now, if I'm going to do V over A, I need a force divided by an area. Well, I got a force on point C, but it's, it's in components. I need the whole enchilada here, right? So I need the magnitude of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to square them, right? CX squared plus CY squared square root, right? Which is... 186.21 squared plus 406.2 squared square root. How much is that? 406 squared plus 186.21 squared equals square root answer equals 446.85. Four forty six point eight five newtons. That is the magnitude of the force acting on the pin at C. Okay, so the bolt or the bar rather is pushing on the pin, trying to tear it in half with a magnitude of four forty six point eight five, but at the same time. The bolt is pushing on the bar with a magnitude of 446.85, right? So I think we have the force here for both of the things that we're looking for, step one and step two. It's the same force. Bolt pushes on me, and I push on bolt, right? So that's the big force that we're looking for right there that's causing all the haboob here. Is that even a word? Probably not. Okay, so let's start off with... This guy, tau equals V over A. Okay, the V, 
We know the V. It's 446.85. And that's what? Newtons divided by the area. Okay, well, the, the what? The diameter was 9 millimeters. So we have a bolt there that the whole thing is 9 millimeters. Right? But we need pi times 4.5 squared. Don't be using the diameter when you want to use the radius, right? That's an old trick that, you know, they try and get some points off of you on the test, but we're smarter than that, aren't we? Times pi equals 63.62. Millimeters squared. 63.62 mm squared. Okay. And where are you, everybody? What what is what is newtons over millimeters squared? That's a megapascal, isn't it? Okay. So here's what we got. We got 446.85 divided by answer 7.02 7.02 Really? Yeah, 7.02 mega pascals. So what is that? That's the answer to number one. That's the average shear stress on the bolt. That's tau. That's V over A. Boom. 7.02, right? So now let's find the bearing stress. Now this is a little bit tricky, so stick with me here, okay? Bearing stress is just going to be P over A, okay? So sigma is equal to P, right, is the force that the bolt is exerting on the bar. We said that was the same that the bar is exerting on the bolt. And that's 446.85. But I told you, the question is, what's the area? Okay, now here's the tricky part. Here is, let's say, that, let me draw this like this, okay? Here's the bar, and let me just draw half this circle, okay? There it is. Here's the bar I cut through the middle of the bolt. I cut through the bar at that point. What does it look like, right? There's an isometric. There you go, right? So the bearing surface that the bolt is pushing on the bar, okay, you might be inclined to say, oh, it's this line right there, or that circumference, that half a circumference, times the thickness of the, the bar. Well, but you would be wrong, okay? The bearing surface is the projected area, right? So if I flip this over and I, and I have my eyeball, here's my eyeball, looking at it from the bottom, what do you see? Well, you see this, okay? There's where the bolt is passing through right there, right? So that bolt is pushing on this projected area right there, and guess what? It's nothing more than a rectangle. And how big is that rectangle? The bar was 15 mm's thick, right? And the width of that, the width of this, right? Whoop, nine mm's. So guess what the area is? It's just nine times 15, boom. 135 millimeters squared. Okay? It's the projected area. If I look at that, what does that projected area look like? Well, it's just the width times the thickness. That's all it is. Okay? And so sigma, right? And I'll put B for bearing. Sigma bearing, which is just regular old normal stress, is 446.85 divided by 135 equals 3.31 megapascals. And that's the answer to part two. That's all there is to it. I hope this helps. I hope you understand what bearing stress is. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.